Hi guys, today we're building a mobile lock screen app thing. So basically we'll try and build something like looks like a lock screen on a typical mobile. Uh, create content. Yeah, this is pretty much the same thing that we do usually. Right, I don't know which one to pick. I think I'm going to go with pain for now. Preferred size. So I wanted to look in sort of portrait mode, which means width is, well, let's go with height first. How about 800? And then width is basically 800 multiplied by 9 over 16. Yeah, that'll do. Can't be bothered to actually calculate the value. So what else? Um, root, do we need an animation timer? I don't know, maybe not. We do need icons, because on mobile you have icons for everything. Icon view, parent, and we're going to use um, a rectangle as background. I suppose like a frame of the icon. <clears throat> Let's go with 50 by 50. Color. Um, I don't actually know. 0303. 05 and then kind of 075 alpha. Uh, get children. Add this background and then make it sort of like a rounded rectangle for which you'll need to change um, arc width and arc height. How about we place all these first? So it's for probably need some kind of a, a constant saying number of uh, icons per row. Final end num icons per row is four. I should probably use grid pane for that, but that's fine. Let's go with twenty three icons. <clears throat> so X is number of icons per row divided by, or is it the other way around? It's the, the count divided by this. And then X, uh, Y is modular division. Is that right? Is it the other way around? Turns the other way around. We'll see. So this gives us the x and y. If we multiply each of them by some value which is greater than 50, so that there is some space in between them, like 75. And then I'm going to create icon view. <clears throat> which means we need to take these values in and then set them. So translate x this, set translate y this, and there we go. Get children, it's root get children. Uh, view. So this runs. That actually isn't too bad. So we've got four number, uh, four icons per row. Yep, that's good. Um, 
probably wanted to kind of shift a little bit so I'll probably offset x and y by some hard-coded value of 100 but all we need is something that looks like a mobile screen um, that's all we need let's set a uh, color to this thing actually I'm just going to use a rectangle as background <coughs> get preferred width and get preferred height. By default, the color is black, so it's fine. Uh, we'll probably then want to center this a bit, but I don't want to calculate the values just right, uh, just right now. So I'll just move this by 75 and then call it a day for this one. What we need is now some kind of a lock screen view. <coughs> so that it um, has a separate, you know, view. Lock screen. And because you can compile this to mobile, you can actually <laughs> build something like uh, an OS wrapper or something like an app that simulates an operating system for your own apps. That could be cool. Lock screen view. Uh, let's take width and height. And then, well, a rectangle again. I like rectangles. They're very useful for lots of things. The color remains whatever well, it's black by default. Do we want black? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you could replace it with an image if you want. That actually makes it a little bit more um, interesting. So you can customize. Okay, now we're getting into design territory. It's it's tricky. There are lots of things you can do if you get into design territory. Get children at background. And we probably want to add like time or something so we need text somewhere in the middle um, text time new text uh, what is it called local date local date time local time there we go uh, right now t string and then whatever that outputs I'm just going to you dump into this text object and then use it to um, show text time because usually the lock screen will show um, some time and possibly notifications you can do notifications in your own time um, for now I'll just do this so translate x so here is uh, something that is quite useful if you want to center a piece of text as in a text object you take uh, the width of your parent or whatever the container is in which you're drawing the text which is something like that and then you minus text time layout bounds get width over t as well that will center it in the x-axis and then you need to do the same for the y-axis actually that's center uh, that's Yeah, that's fine. I need to do the same for the y-axis now. Uh, it's height over 2 minus get height over 2. So that should center it and maybe increase the font because that's pretty much the only thing you're displaying. So the font size should be pretty good, like 36. Okay, so we've got our uh, lock screen view, which we can store somewhere here. Uh, lock screen. And then we're going to initialize it over here. Width and height are these values. Probably want to calculate them and then store them somewhere. How about we add that to the root, but keep it off screen? Um, yeah, it needs to go over the icons, so it should be added here. It's a common technique in 
games and other things, just tricking the user. As in, you actually have the lock screen in the scene graph at all times. You just move it depending on where you want it to be. So currently, it should draw from 0, 0, which means the only thing I'm going to see is the lock screen. And text is also black, so I need to change the fill, set fill to color white. And I probably then want to take this and then set translate Y to off screen, which is like super high. It's minus the height of this thing, so it might as well be 800, which means it's going to be just above your main screen. And then what we want to do as the last thing for this video is the animation of it sliding down and up. So what I like for um, sliding thing um, or rather lock screening is the double clicking from OnePlus phones. What they've done is basically if you double click on your main screen, then you're locking your phone. You don't have to click on the uh, physical button. So I can take this background and then add a handler to it. Set mouse click. And then if a get count, click count is two, then I want to play an animation. Uh, then lock screen. And we're going to implement that as a method separately. And then I'm assuming there needs to be something on the lock screen itself so that when I click on that, it opens. Void open screen or something. In which case, this doesn't, this can't be static. It has to be inner class. So I can call this method. Um, so. I suppose again in the, in the background is the easiest way to do this. A background set on mouse clicked, just call open screen. And then if you want to take this level further, you probably want to add some kind of password screen so that from lock screen it goes to password screen, the user enters the password, and then you open the screen if it matches. Um, yeah, so locking is what? Locking is just dropping the screen from minus 800 to zero. And I also need to keep track of the animation because we don't want to lock screen twice, for example. Is animating false by default. And then if I'm locking the screen and if it's an animation, then just return. Same with open screen. Else, I can safely do the animation, which is translate transition. Uh, translate transition takes, uh, what does it take? Duration and node. Duration is, well, I'm assuming, something very quick. And then the node that I'm animating is lock screen. Set from y is minus 800, because we're locking set to y is zero and then just play i wonder if we can just store the animation and play it backwards because it's exactly the same animation right it's going down and then going up so it's from this value to minus 800 and then we need to return is animating uh, to its default state, which is great. First of all, we need to actually change it, the um, flag so it's so it knows that it's animating now. And then we need to change default when this animation finishes, which is on finished, I think. Okay, let's try that. 
So one click, separate one click, double click. Nice. So if I double click, I get this thing. And if I click on it, I guess because the color background is black, it doesn't kind of have the same effect. How about we change the color of the main screen background, which is this one. So you set it to something like, I know, red. Red stands out, right? Yeah. It's not bad. I'm quite happy with it, actually. And then from here on, you can start adding a lot of different things, you know, like normal things that your mobile phone has. Um, notifications probably go somewhere here, just under the clock. Probably want to increase the font size of this thing as well. Uh, you want some kind of a lock screen, like lock symbol, so that the user knows that it's locked and they need to open it before uh, going further. Probably want to add as well the um, what is it fingerprint scanner type thing, and then this will look like an emulation of mobile screen, I guess, which you can turn into a mobile phone app using Glow on a client. And I'll link to the JavaFX tutorial on how to do that as well. Okay, so in this video we talked about. Uh, well, nothing new really. We've used the same techniques that we've used before to create icons, to create lock screen views, um, and then create an effect that kind of simulates the lock screen sliding effect. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.